Hi, my name is Dr. Nathan Fowler from the MD Anderson Cancer Center, and today I'd like to share with you some of the highlights of the 2020 EHA and ASCO meetings. And uh, specifically, uh, I'm going to focus on some of the abstracts which I felt were uh, very relevant uh, regarding uh, new advances in indolent lymphomas. Uh, the first of these uh, is by uh, the group that has been looking at uh, CAR T cell therapy in low grade lymphomas. This was an abstract presented by Dr. Jacobson and uh, colleagues. And in this study, uh, they looked at the activity of uh, AXI cell, which is an anti CD19 CAR T cell therapy in patients with relapse and refractory indolent lymphomas. Uh, this was uh, a very nice analysis of uh, quite a few patients. Uh, there were 94 patients. These were 80 with follicular and 14 with marginal zone lymphoma, all who had relapsed or refractory disease and received uh, CAR T cell therapy as, um, as management of their relapse. Uh, pretty good responses, overall response rate of 94%, with a complete remission rate of 79%. Uh, in this abstract, uh, they also had some progression free survival curves. Uh, as of last follow-up, and this was around 18 months, they are still seeing patients relapse, uh, which uh, I think we have to watch. Uh, clearly with CAR T cells, I think the, the thing to follow uh, and the thing that we're most interested in is the potential for long-term cure. So for this abstract, uh, and again for this uh, technology, I think we just need a little more follow-up to understand the impact of uh, CAR T cells in low-grade lymphomas. The good news is that uh, there are many studies uh, like this ongoing, and we will have longer follow-up with more time. Um, and the other abstract here was a uh, longer-term follow-up uh, of a large randomized phase three trial, which has been previously published. This is the Gallium trial. This study randomized patients to receive a backbone of chemotherapy and either rituximab or a newer generation anti-CD20 called obinutuzumab. This was a very large uh, phase three trial uh, enrolling 1,200 patients. And at ASCO, we saw a uh, longer-term follow-up from that uh, study. So this was at a median follow-up of 76 months, quite a long time. And here, we continue to see a benefit in progression-free survival. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for, we have yet to see a benefit in long-term overall survival. So I think, again, with, how, with uh, my, my interpretations of this is, uh, it further uh, defines the benefit for this treatment uh, in patients with regards to progression-free survival. But again, with no overall survival, I'm not sure if uh, this longer-term follow-up is going to change a lot of people's practice. Again, it kind of, uh, if you believe in uh, obinutuzumab in the front line, it further solidifies your, your, your beliefs. And if you think that you can wait to use this in a relapse setting, you also have ammunition here uh, with, this, with this abstract. Um, the next abstract, uh, about halfway through, is the magnified trial. This is also a randomized trial. Uh, this was an interim analysis of patients that are uh, currently on that trial. This trial looked at lenalidomide and rituximab for relapse and refractory low-grade lymphomas. The randomized part of this trial was randomizing patients to two different maintenance arms. And so what we've seen at, at multiple, multiple um, meetings is... Uh, interim results from the induction arm. Uh, so that means the both everybody in the study was getting lenalidomide and rituximab. Uh, this is not really looking at the benefit of maintenance or not maintenance. And again, why I picked this abstract is uh, they were looking specifically at patients with low-grade lymphoma, specifically follicular, that fit into four prognostic groups. And that means patients that had early re relapse following first-line therapy, uh, patients that are in the POD24 group, patients that were double refractory, uh, patients that were rituxan refractory. And in those groups, uh, for example, rituxan refractory, we saw overall response rate of 60% with a CR rate of 36%. So remember, this combination has rituximab. So suggests that adding lenalidomide to rituximab background still resulted in efficacy. And this is a higher rate of response than we generally see with lenalidomide alone. We also saw uh, an overall response rate of 50% in double refractory and patients who had early relapse also with a 66% overall response rate. Uh, last thing I'll mention here is that the progression free survival uh, in these patients that were double refractory or rituxan refractory was pretty good, 17 to around 25 months. So we're seeing about two year progression free survival even in these populations 
that uh, unfortunately do poorly often with other types of therapy. So again, I think uh, interesting to look at. We know we I think we all know now that lenalidomide and rituximab is FDA approved for relapsed follicular lymphoma, and this trial uh, further shows that uh, even in high risk populations, the combination has uh, significant benefit. So moving on to the uh, EHA conference, uh, which is happening this weekend, which is uh, July, I'm sorry, June 11th and 12th. Um, so I saw a couple abstracts. One of these was from uh, the group that uh, showed the use of xanabrutinib. This is a next generation BTK inhibitor in patients with marginal zone lymphoma. This was presented by uh, Dr. Tedeschi and her colleagues. Uh, not, a, not a large trial, 20 patients with relapsed and refractory marginal zone lymphoma were all treated with single agent xanabrutinib. But the trial showed that uh, the drug was very well tolerated, actually didn't report any AFib, again, small numbers of patients, only 20 patients, but uh, very well tolerated, overall response rate 75% with an 18-month progression-free survival of 69%. Uh, so to put this in context, uh, as we, as you probably know, uh, there are other BTK inhibitors that are currently approved for marginal zone lymphoma. So this suggests, again, small numbers, but suggests that this other BTK inhibitor uh, with uh, not a lot of toxicity, at least in this small study, uh, could also be very active in this group of patients with uh, relapsed disease. And finally, I'm going to uh, touch on um, a, a whole different drug, and this is a PI3 kinase inhibitor, which is being developed by MEI Pharma called ME401. Uh, and why I, I like this uh, study is uh, the, the authors, this was uh, presented by John Pagel and his colleagues, talked about how uh, a different schedule could potentially lead to improvement in outcomes as well as toxicity. Uh, as a little bit of context, uh, PI3 kinase inhibitors are approved uh, for relapsed follicular lymphoma, especially for relapsed and refractory patients. Unfortunately, many of the drugs that are currently on the market are associated with high rates of uh, secondary side effects, sometimes infections, sometimes colitis and diarrhea. And why this matters, obviously beyond the fact that patients develop a lot of side effects, is that many patients cannot stay on these drugs for an extended amount of time. And in a chronic disease like follicular lymphoma, uh, we'd like to see really maximum drug exposure in order to optimize responses. So uh, with that background, again, they enrolled around 57 patients with a combination of SLL, large cell, CLL, and follicular. The vast majority of patients here were follicular lymphoma. And uh, in that study, they did a very interesting schedule where they gave uh, full doses uh, for two 28-day cycles and then switched to one week every month uh, until patients had progression. So again, full dose for two months and then kind of went into an intermittent schedule in patients who were responding or, or receiving benefit to the drug. And with this approach, only three patients, 5%, had a discontinued drug due to side effects, suggesting that, again, moving to this alternate schedule really allowed the drug to be tolerated quite well in the majority of patients. With this approach, they saw an overall response rate of 83% in follicular lymphoma, and the median progression-free survival has yet to been reached. So again, small, small-ish study, uh, still ongoing, but uh, I think it's very intriguing that uh, moving to an alternating uh, alternate schedule where we decrease the dose or the exposure of the drug um, intermittently uh, seemed to work quite well with very few patients having to discontinue the drug and still maintaining a good progression-free survival and high overall responses. So uh, again, that's what I got. Uh, there are many other abstracts uh, that are very interesting across many different types of lymphomas. I encourage you to check out the websites at ASCO and EHA for more details on uh, those abstracts as well as the ones I talked about. And thanks so much for your attention.